Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kiana and I do a bunch of sewing and fashion videos. And today I have some tips and tricks for you. One of my most asked questions is, Kiana, why do my clothes look homemade? How do yours look so professional? What am I doing wrong? Well, I'm here to tell you what you're doing wrong. So here are a few reasons why the clothing you sewed looks bad. And I've come ready with examples from when I was learning how to sew and when I kind of sucked at sewing so I can show you the growth and what I changed to be better. Tip number one, you are choosing the wrong fabric for your project. Fabric choice can be a tricky thing, but it's important to remember to work with the fabric and let the fabric tell you what it wants to be instead of forcing a fabric to work for your project. Here is a lovely little blazer I made back when I was only 19 years old. It's horrible and I will be using this as a reference for multiple points because it is just the worst thing anyone's ever made ever. The fabric I used here is a gabardine fabric that I picked up from I think online fabric store and is just absolutely the wrong fabric for this project. It doesn't press down to be crisp. So all these seams look like they've not been pressed. So yeah, this is not the correct fabric to choose for a blazer. However, I have a good example to show you too. I made this a few months later and look how nice and crisp and clean this looks. Look at that, wow. Why does it look so good? Because I picked a good fabric. Actually, and because I sewed this 500 times better than the other one, I didn't prototype that one well or finish it well or sew it well. So this is just like better in all aspects but especially I picked the right fabric. What I recommend you do when choosing a fabric for a project is going into the fabric store and feeling the fabrics. For example, if you're working on a project that has this nice fluid and drapey cowl in it, you're gonna want a nice fluid and drapey fabric. So I'd go into the fabric store, I'd feel the fabrics, I'd see if it does what I want it to do. If there's a fabric that I really like the color of or I really like the sheen of, but it's not being manipulated in the way I want, I'm gonna pass on it. Another example of when fabric choice is super important, I have this really puffy dress right here. And because it's quite a stiff fabric, it puffs out a lot when I'm wearing it. I were to choose a fabric that was more fluid, it would not be as full, it would not be as puffy. But before we go any further, I wanna thank Audible for sponsoring today's video. You guys know I'm always super busy either sewing or working on my computer. So with Audible, I'm able to listen to audiobooks while I'm getting things done. The Audible app just makes it super easy to listen anytime, anywhere, whether I'm in my sewing studio, whether I'm in the other room cutting fabric or even walking my dog. And they have every genre you can imagine. They got thriller, mystery, romance, wellness, business. I personally have been listening to some fashion design and entrepreneurship specific books, very me, which I wanna give you guys some recs because I know a lot of y'all are aspiring fashion designers and entrepreneurs. I've been listening to How to Start a Clothing Company by Taylor Mansfield because yeah, I already have a pattern making business, but wouldn't it be cool one day if I ex Banded and I actually started a clothing company. I know I don't got a lot of free time now, <laughs> but I'm just super interested in that side of the business. Another title I would recommend for you guys is Becoming a Fashion Designer by Lindsay Peoples Wagner, which is a really good story about three different people and their journey into becoming a fashion designer, which looks totally different for everyone. So if your dream job is to become a fashion designer, highly recommend. But if neither of those interests you, Audible is the home of storytelling, so you'll always be able to find something you love or new to discover. So if you're interested, new members can try Audible for free for 30 days. And as an Audible member, you're able to pick one title a month to keep from the entire catalog, which includes bestsellers and new releases. Members also get full access to a growing collection of all included audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts, so you can download or stream those anytime you want. So if you wanna try Audible, be sure to click that first link down below. And thank you again, Audible, for sponsoring today's video. Now, back to the sewing tips. Tip number two, you got to prototype. I'm sorry, I know you don't wanna hear it, but you have to prototype, please. Think about it. When you go into the store and you try on 10 different things and six of the things you tried on don't fit you well in certain places, that's because all of our bodies are different. And it is the same way if you're creating your clothes because you're making things from standard measurements, really. So it's important to prototype so you can make any alterations to the pattern necessary before you make it out of your fashion fabric. And it's super important to check 
check the size chart. Oh my gosh. The size you are in McCall's patterns versus Vogue patterns versus my digital patterns versus what you get at Abercrombie and Fitch is gonna be different. So if you're a size six in Abercrombie, don't just make a size six in the pattern. You need to read the size chart, measure your bust, waist, and hips, and pick the size you wanna create based off the size chart. The size chart is not there to look pretty. The size chart is there to help you make the best garment you can make. Now the beauty of making your own clothes means that you can mix and match sizes. So most patterns and my patterns too, they're nested, meaning all the pattern sizes are printed on top of each other. So maybe I'm a size zero in my bust, I'm a size two in my waist and a size four in my hips. I can cut out the pattern in those sizes and make a custom size. I'm not as mad at you if you don't prototype as long as you check the size chart and you make it fit your personal measurements, I still, I really would rather you prototype. I prototype everything. That's why my clothes turn out so good because these days I prototype everything. When I was younger, I used to not prototype and my clothes turned out bad. So like, yes, I'd rather you prototype, but if you're not going to, at least check the size chart. You might recognize this dress. This is my recreation of Gigi Hadid's Met Gala dress in 2021, I think. I did not prototype this. So you'll notice that the shape of the neckline is not exactly the same as Gigi Hadid's. I didn't prototype it also because this was literally just made for clout. <laughs> I just wanted to go viral on TikTok and I did, so slay. But yeah, the shape isn't completely correct. Plus without prototyping, I didn't work out all those finishings beforehand before making the final dress. So it looks like I forgot to understitch. I didn't plan out how I was gonna do the zipper. And oh my God, the zipper is terrifying. Don't look at it. Here's an example of a dress that I prototyped three full times before making the fourth dress, the final dress that you see here. And you might be thinking, wow, Kiana, that is just like a very basic dress. Why would I need to prototype that? Just because it looks easier doesn't mean it is. You should be putting effort into your garments. And because I prototyped it three times, it came out literally perfect. I made that for a school project and I got a perfect score. It was beautiful. Tip three, I will not talk about this too long. Please press and trim your garments as you are sewing it. Do not sew 30 seams and then wait until you're done with the entire garment to finally start trimming your threads and pressing it. Oh my gosh, I will strangle you. After every single seam, trim your threads. Otherwise, they're gonna get caught up in the garment. It's gonna pull weird, or you're gonna have little threads sticking out everywhere. No! And you need to press your seams after every seam too. Maybe not after every seam, but after every couple of seams, at least. You cannot give it a good press after everything's already sewn. You need to press after each seam. Okay, I'm not mad at you if you didn't know this before. If you didn't know it, now you know, okay? But now that you know, I expect you to do it every time. Literally, this is the most basic tip. If you're not doing that and then you're complaining that you're closed, don't look professional, I have no idea what to say to you because that's literally the number one thing that you need to be doing. So like you have to do it, Other, like you have to, okay? Tip number four is making sure that all of your finishings look super professional. Water finishings, the things like your hem, your buttons, your bias tape bindings, they're things that you do when you're basically done sewing the garment, you're just on that final finishing step. But if you rush through those steps, it's your garment is gonna look homemade. So again, we brought back my blazer, my crappy blazer, <laughs> to show you what bad finishings looks like. For example, look at this hem. When I sewed it, I was pulling the fabric and it creates this kind of like twisted, distorted hem. Not a slay, shoulda redone that. Make sure all your edges are finished. I don't wanna see any raw edges. That should have been surged or bias bound or at least pinked. And then this kind of goes hand in hand with tip number five, which is if you don't know how to do something, if you don't know the technique, then look it up. YouTube has literally everything nowadays. If you don't know how to finish an armhole for a tank top, Google it, YouTube it, you will find it. For example, this finishing should have been finished with bias tape. It didn't need to be exposed bias tape. I would probably have done now a hidden bias tape binding here. Tell me why I just turned and stitched the armhole. That is a bad finishing here. That is not good. What I did in my head was, mm, I don't know how to finish this, so I'm just gonna guess and turn and stitch it. Don't guess, don't be like me six years ago. Don't do that. There is no need to guess because we have the thing called the internet now and you can go, Doo -doo 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 -doo. how do I finish an armhole for a tank top? And the internet will tell you and it will have 10 videos with tutorials to help you. Because this 
it looks bad. It might not look that bad on camera, but in person, it doesn't lay the right way. It looks homemade. Tip number six, the inside of your garment should look just as professional as the outside. And maybe you sew the outside so good and the inside so bad that you won't even be able to notice when wearing it. But sometimes you can see that coming through. You might be able to see sometimes from the neckline if it gapes and then you see some bad finished edges on the inside or under the armpit. Yeah, so let me show you an example of something that should have been lined or at the very least should have been surged. I think I hit it pretty well when I did photographs of this. Again, I was just a wee babe when I made this, but here is the inside of this garment. Oh, it's not even stitched down. There's no finished edges. Look at, oh my gosh, it's horrible. Look at the way the waistband is just not stitched down correctly. It looks, hideous on the inside, disgusting. If you were to take this off and give it to someone, they'd be like, what the crap is that? What is that? A well-made garment is built from the inside out. So we can't be skipping those steps. Here is a garment that is beautiful and it looks just as good inside as it does outside. You can see I actually lined this. It's finished well. Look at the understitching, a bias bound edge surged. It's clean around all the edges. And I feel like the cleanliness of the inside really translates to the outside. No corners were cut in the making of this garment. Which finally brings me to tip number seven. A professional cuts zero corners. I know it can feel tempting sometimes to not press a seam here or there or not finish a seam because it's not gonna be seen anyways. But whether you cut one corner or if you keep doing so and add up to cutting like 20 corners, your garment is not gonna turn out as good as it could have if you cut zero corners. And if you want something to turn out professional, if you want it to not look homemade, you gotta cut zero corners. I used to cut corners when I was younger and I didn't know what I was doing as much and maybe I was a little bit lazier, but now I don't cut the corners. I prototype things three times. I make sure all of my finishings are exactly where they need to be. You think they're cutting corners over at Chanel? No, maybe they are over at Shein. You want your clothes to look like it came from Shein? <laughs> <laughs> or do you want them to look like they came from Chanel? Exactly. Anyways, those are all the tips I have right now that came to me when I was just brainstorming down the list of how to make your clothes look more professional. If you guys have some additional tips you wanna help some people out down below in the comments, feel free to do so. Let's all help each other. Which leads me into my question of the day. What do you think is the most important step when sewing and trying to make your clothes look professional? Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, if it taught you anything and you liked it at all, feel free to give me a thumbs up because it's the easiest way to support your favorite creators for free. Also feel free to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. My handle is Kiana Bonolo. Subscribe, turn on that notification bell. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you again to Audible for sponsoring today's video and I'll see you next time. Bye.